Welcome back, everybody. You're watching the Doc and Lefty show. Lefty is uh, out performing and making some extra money the old-fashioned way he is earning it. So, anyway, we're talking about the, the roast and ride, the inaugural roast and ride of Senator Ernst. And we were talking about how accessible everybody was. Rick Perry worked the crowd. Uh, that guy, I will tell you, that guy works a mean crowd. They all do. The only person I have ever met that works a crowd or hustles more than those guys is Brad's on. I kid you not. I'm a big fan of hustle. And I can tell you, he's the only candidate uh, when I was running for Congress that ever was there at the house before I ever was. And I did beat him to some of the houses, but for the most part, he won that fight. Anyway, everybody's walking around shaking hands, national media. Uh, if you watch national media, you saw all kinds of regular folk just talking. Talking to Senator Ernst, talking to Senator Cotton, talking to Steve King and David Young, talking to the governor, uh, talking to lieutenant governor, all kinds of state uh, senators and representatives, and all these, and seven of these presidential candidates are right out there talking, shaking hands, right? In fact, here's here's my story from this. Honest to goodness, I didn't know who they were following these these people, but they're at the big barn, which is the it's the um, the big barn Harley Davidson. If you, uh, if you're a biker, you know where that's at. It's right on the interstate. And I'm like, well, Hey, don't I get breakfast with this thing? Cause you know, being a fat guy, you know, I got to work hard to maintain my svelte profile. So I'm heading over to the, over to the breakfast and all of a sudden this, this Scott Walker, I've recognized him before. I've met him before comes up and he goes, well, hi, how you doing? Oh, hi. You remember me? I'm Pat Petroche. Oh Yeah. So we just do the typical chat, you know. I mean, it's 30 seconds, maybe a minute at the most. And I go on, you know, he everybody goes on by and I go on over to the breakfast. I don't think much about it. Watching the I'm watching the Daily Show with John Stewart last night. I swear I've only watched maybe five episodes my whole life. And not even complete episodes, just flicking around going, Well, it's better than watching a commercial kind of time killing thing. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm watching this, and all of a sudden it's me. With Scott Walker on the Daily News, John Stewart is making fun of the regular folks in Iowa talking to Scott Walker. Not only talking to Scott Walker, but Rick Perry talking to regular folks. Mike Huckabee talking to regular folks. Right? That's what you can expect from the left. We're regular people in here in flyover country. But there's John Stewart, liberal extraordinaire, making fun of... Not only of these candidates making themselves accessible, but making fun of us and our speech patterns. Well, you know, what do you expect from the left? That's just the way it is. Now, by this time, I'm sure lefty would be going nuts, going, oh, well, you know, whatever. All I know is that's what John Stewart said. And we got the same type of coverage from NBC, MSNBC, which isn't a stretch, and CNN. Now, those are the only ones I actually watched, right? The rest of them I caught, like, on YouTube after they've been, you know, edited and all that. But those were the actual ones. And they all kind of, they're less derogatory about it than Jon Stewart, but they all did the same thing. So I want to contrast that, the accessibility of Republican candidates and Republican governors and Republican representatives and senators against that of the Democrats, Apparently, last week, Hillary Clinton had to go back to New York and relaunch her presidential campaign. Honest to goodness, there's three or four Democrats running, but it's only Hillary Clinton that anybody talks about. Every once in a while, Bernie Sanders gets his name mentioned, but other than that, they've already coronated uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, at least the press has, and they're doing their best to try to keep all the, the controversy to a minimum. So I'm going through things on Sunday. Uh, excuse me. Going through my Facebook, cleaning up, cleaning out my, you know how it goes. And, you know, because we're a small operation, boss has to do that kind of stuff. And I see this feed from one of my Democratic friends that says, well, if you would like an opportunity to meet Hillary Clinton. Now, this is what I'm expecting. We're going to be at. Pizza Ranch, because that's where all the politicians go, on Saturday or Wednesday, whenever it is, at 8 a.m., and please come. We'd like to meet you. No, that's not what the rest of it said. The rest of it says, you can then apply 
in a lottery type system to win a ticket to see Hillary. Now I know Maddie is a little bit more liberal than I am. Do you think that's being available to the people when you have to win a lottery to see your presidential candidate? No. There you go. Straight from a liberal's mouth. Are you a liberal? You're not all that far left. You're not like lefty. I don't even know. I don't know. You don't know? See, probably a libertarian. I'm, I'm good with those people. So the bottom line is, is that doesn't sound like, you know, she wants to meet the people anyway. She apparently was in Iowa sometime within the last two weeks doing one of her stealth campaigns, showing up, meeting people in secret, then kicking everybody out and running off in the Scooby-Doo machine, whatever that is. That is the second point I want to make. Republicans are much more approachable. You keep in mind, Senator, or excuse me, uh, Governor Perry is the longest serving senator in Texas. That's saying something, right? That's saying something. Our governor here in Iowa, longest serving governor ever, ever. And there he is out shaking hands with everybody. Not just shaking hands with giant donors, shaking hands with the likes of me, right? Look at this face. Would you even come near that face? Most people wouldn't. Governor, he goes, hey, Pat, how you doing? Right in front of the cameras, right? He's doing that with, you know, I'm not an exception. He does that with everybody. Sam Clovis did that with everybody, right? Sam gave me a big old hug. Anyway, so that's the second point. My third point is all these guys, people working for Senator Ernst in her D.C. office, I didn't meet a single one over 24 years of age. They're all 24 and younger. And I thought to myself, you know what? If you're commanding men in battle, making sure that you're running guns and butter and bullets up to the front and you have 24 and under men to work with, that's the best way to run your office. These guys were high energy, high excitement, and I'm going to tell you, top notch. These were some squared away boys. And I'm going to call out Arthur Headley. He helped me out a ton, a ton. Whatever I wanted, I'd need. I felt special. You know what? He got on the phone with talking to somebody else. He said exactly the same thing to them. Made everybody feel special. That's wonderful. That is absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to tell you, I think those kids and Joni Ernst energized that entire crowd with their enthusiasm and energy. And the governor... And we all know he's not the greatest public speaker. The governor gave the speech of a lifetime. I have never heard a better speech from the governor other than at that roast. I've seen him deliver a lot of bombs, right? A lot of bombs. It's okay. He got the crowd fired up. They were clapping. They were standing up. Everything was excellent. Terrific. And then, of course, he pulled the governor and kind of stumbled a little bit at the end. But I'm going to tell you, how often have you ever seen Governor Branstad bring a crowd to its feet? That's how on fire he was. And then it just got better from there. Just absolutely better from there. All the presidential candidates said exactly what they said. I'm going to say, now everybody thinks Rick Perry did a great job. He did. I think the person that did the best job was not a candidate there. I think that was Tom Cotton. I think he gave the best speech of the night. Don't get me wrong. Joe Nearest gave a great speech. But for my money, the best speech of the night was Tom Cotton. If I had to pick between the presidential candidates, I'm going to say it's a pretty close tie between Rick Perry and Scott Walker. Those guys really have it together. And I think Perry's team is doing well. Now, when we come back, we're going to be talking more about uh, the, the roast and ride a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about Hillary, some of the things afflicting her, and uh, talk about some of the other presidential candidates, some of the trouble they've had this week. We'll be back right after this break. 